Uh, Dot Asia launched six years ago, actually, in India. And I'm, every time I come back here, I'm very fond, I have very fond memories about launching Dot Asia and the exciting Bollywood music that, that we, uh, we, 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 we launched into uh, that day. Um, so, earlier today, actually, um, our, our, our friend Deepak there mentioned that uh, <laughs> Uh, he, he, he got into uh, you know, a number of .Asia domains. Um, one thing that I remember um, when we first launched in 2008, we, we worked with a um, PR company, a, a, a uh, uh, public re relations company here uh, in India. What is interesting is that at that time, um, one of the um, one of the one of the agents that uh, worked with us for Dot Asia launch um, got so impressed with the domain industry that he actually became a domain investor. Well, when we come back to India for free, you know, afterwards for for other of our promotion activities, I no longer see him because he's now a full-time domainer. So, you know, I, that's I guess a uh, a, a pretty good. Uh, story and a very exciting story for our industry, moving from public relations into domainer and probably retired by now. So, um, what I'm going to talk about is, uh, I guess what I was asked to talk about is the, the future about uh, with many TLDs and especially with the experience from Dot Asia, what we see uh, in, in the future for many TLDs. By, the, by this time, I think this is uh, not news. Um, we are looking into a, a, a future of uh, th you know, over, over a thousand, close to 2,000 uh, new GTLDs and probably more into the thousands of GTLDs. So, um, you already know this, but this gives you a little bit of perspective uh, of, of how, how, how big, you know, the change is. This is what we have a couple years ago, in fact, up till now. We have only about 280 uh, top-level domains around the world, and most of them are what is called country code top-level domains. However, in the next couple of years, we're going to see a huge explosion. Uh, many of the top-level domains coming online are going to be what is called GTLDs, generic top-level domains. And that is the kind of internet expansion that we're talking about, and I'm sure everyone knows. But some of the things that um, I'm going to talk about is actually thinking about uh, not only just a bit of the future, but coming back to some of the basics. And talking about basics, wanted to, to introduce this guy. You, you may, may or may not know, um, this guy is called John Postel. And um, today we have this uh, multinational organization called ICANN, I-C-A-N-N, -N, that organizes the, um, the domain name system and coordinates the policies globally for, 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 for us. It used to be this guy, one person, uh, you know, managing the entire global uh, internet domain names. And one of the interesting uh, stories, I actually not heard from him, but in this little um, photo that's shown, when the domain name system was first created, uh, the creator, who's called Paul Mockert Petrus, actually at that time created the hierarchy of country code top level domains like .in, .hk, .cn, uh, and so on. And and also there is, uh, you know, for everything else, there is uh, .com, .net, .org. At that time, actually, according to Paul, when uh, we spoke at a 25th year anniversary of the do uh, domain name system, he said that he, nobody thought, you know, anyone would register a .com name. They thought that people would register .jp, .uk, .us. That makes a lot of sense. Nobody's going to take .com. Well, they'll just give it to this little company that is in the U.S. and they will run it. So that was then. But of course, this is now 250 million domain names later. We know that .com, uh, up till now at least, it's, it's pretty much king for in terms of domain names. So one of the things to remember is that um, now we're looking at thousands of new GTLDs. As we think about the history, you know, we might know every, you know, we might think we know everything about .com by now. Maybe that's not the case, you know, uh, and, and I think a lot of the exciting future is still yet to come. So, 
But one thing we do know is that domain names no longer is just a, a command line on the internet. It's, it's also more than a brand. But um, as we con contemplate what is going to be in the next phase of domain names, it's again coming back to how we, get, how we got there. Um, domain names first, was, first and foremost was just a command line tool for the internet, for navigating the internet. It still is. But it's not only that. Um, over the years, um, that, that was all the way up to late 90s. In the late 90s, it became a vanity name. It became a brand name. So domain names are very much tied with brand names. And into the 2000s, um, a, a, a new wave of usage of domain names uh, emerged, especially in search engine optimization and, of course, uh, the gathering here and many other places amount, about the domain investment value. That grew from the early 2000s to now, um, over the last 10 years or so. So, but the basic of which, the entire growth, I think a number of speakers before me talked about this as well. Domain names are really like uh, real estate on the internet, and a lot of it is about location. And we talk about marketing, we talk about location, location, location. And one of the interesting things about domain investment value is the, the ability to turn that sort of location into what is called a long tail uh, uh, value. This is something you, you probably have heard of as well, but a portfolio of domain names give you that long tail value. What that means is that today, it's no longer about just one domain name. A lot of businesses and a lot of companies still think, you know, there's one particular domain name. But uh, the, the, the trend, especially driven by this community, especially driven by domain investment community, is that there is value in a portfolio of domain names. What it means is that you pick up the, 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 the traffic, you pick up the long tail traffic, um, um, with the domain names, there's the, you're still going to have the key domain, the key portal for your company or your product, but um, today companies are actually leveraging the utilization of a strategic portfolio of domain names to, to, to sort of gather the long tail value. The um, comparison with the offline world, I think the best comparison is that in the real world, we have these chain stores, right? I mean, uh, brick and mortar world, we have chain stores. The reason why we have a store at every corner of the, you know, around, around, around the city is because they collect the traffic. You know, chain stores collect traffic from very diff various different places to, you know, to, to generate sales, to generate leads. And that's what a portfolio of domain names, the way that you think about a portfolio of domain names, that's probably one very good way to think about it. Um, so, and, you know, I guess this is not just the domain investment uh, um, uh, community knows about this, and this is really reason why, uh, just in terms of application of new top-level domains, the application fee itself, you know, sent into ICANN is over 350 million U.S. dollars. You know, this is not, you know, even before any one single new do domain name was sold. So people see the value in these domain names. Um, and, and one of the core important part is, of course, you know, re realizing the traffic potential and realizing the value of these uh, uh, virtual real estate. And another important thing, and I think Google mentioned just now, also um, they went in. To, to apply for over 100 uh, top-level domains. And the biggest cloud providers today, including Amazon and Windows uh, and Microsoft, also came in with multiple applications. Amazon itself applied for more than 70 uh, uh, G new G GTLDs. And well, we, we, we talk about the you know, cloud space, which is essentially infinite. But these companies realize that the namespace is always going to be limited and is always going to be a scarce resource. Why? Because domain names require a uniqueness. So there could only be one uh, uh, google.com and there's going to only be one uh, uh, whatever dot web or dot music. That's the reason why domain names is always going to be scarce. And these companies are actually vying for the, 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 the namespace which equals cloud space in the future. 
And just look at the, the, the contention between Google and Amazon itself, two of the titans uh, of the online world today. Um, you see dot .search, dot .music, dot .play, um, and these are some of the names, I think, uh, also that will drive our, our industry as well. One of the things that we talk about is, you know, what, what's, what's the future looking like? What, what is the, you know, what is trend going? One of the things you might want to think about is actually who is applying for what uh, in the top level domain, and that gives you a pretty good idea of what's trending, I guess. Um, and of course, another big development about the new, from the new GTLDs are brands. And top brands are getting their own GTLDs. That's going to have an impact on the uh, domain industry as a whole. Are they going to you know, not buy any more uh, domain names? I don't think so. But they're going to roll out new services, new trusted services to their customers under .apple or .ibm or .bmw. Um, these are going to redefine the way we think about domain names uh, into, into the future. It is, mo uh, uh, it is not only about um, you know, building websites, but also building about ident identity, trust, and, and value from, from loyalty, from, from fans. That's one of the, uh, uh, I think, trend lines that we need to take a look at. So there are applied for about 2,000 new top-level domains, 2,000 applications in the last couple of years. And if you look at the percentage, um, the official percentage is about 50% coming from North America. But if you look at actually at some of the North American companies that we're familiar with, like Amazon and VeriSign, um, actually, closer to 70%. You know, they're using different entities around the world to apply for the new TLDs. So if you, if you account for that, over uh, uh, close to 70% is actually coming from North America. This reminds me of something. This reminds us of the, new, the, the old dot-com days, when dot-com was new. You know, most of, the, most of the, 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 the very early pioneers of domaining and uh, uh, um, domainers and, and investment into dot-com names came from the North America. And we're seeing that same pattern. We're seeing that same pattern over again in this new TLDs. Uh, and Asia, just 15%. Just about 15% is coming from Asia right now. And diving a little bit deeper into Asia, India occupies about 21 applications uh, out of about 300 applications, so less than 10%. Um, if you look at China, it's about 40 applications. Hong Kong, about 40 applications. You add them together, if you, if you consider Hong Kong, Macau, uh, part of China, the Chinese uh, applications um, come up to the most among the region. Next is uh, Japan with about 71, um, 70 applications. What is interesting is missing in action in Korea. Um, only five uh, uh, new GTLD applications, and also Taiwan, only four applications coming from them. Um, you can see that this is a very interesting development because um, what you see is that, you know, obviously China is leading the way, um, and, and Japan closely following, and then, uh, and then we have India. Um, and I think this is, this is something that, that we should uh, uh, pay attention to as well. So when you talk about new GTLDs, we come back to the basics, I think, in terms of what people are going to use it for. And uh, when we talk about uh, uh, um, domain names today, the first challenge is going to be, hey, uh, everyone's searching now. Who, who uses domain names anymore? You know, my, my mother or you know, uh, my uncle who went, goes online only searches on Google, and that's their online experience. Well, probably. But we have learned, as I mentioned, in the 2000 uh, years, uh, these, uh, I mean, the, from year 2000 onwards, is the value of search engine optimization and how domain names play a part in search. And that is going to continue to be the case, and that's going to continue to drive the interest for domain names, I think. And that's also the reason why Google applied for so many top-level domains. I mean, that, I think, is the best telltale uh, overall. And from Dot Asia, we are also, uh, we are also um, sort of tracking that information. And we're taking a look at uh, how, how many sites 
uh, are indexed, uh, you know, how many .Asia uh, sites are indexed in, under Google. And we're, we're quite happy, we're quite excited that it's continuing to grow and it's grown to over 300 million uh, web pages indexed into Google this year. So, um, and we, we're excited because uh, we're also seeing people utilizing uh, .Asia for, for search engine optimization. And that has been a very important part of, uh, of, of the growth of .Asia up to about right now, uh, about 400,000, uh, close, uh, close to a half a million domain registrations. And we found that, uh, well, one of the interesting things about the Google search uh, algorithm is that if you're coming from Asia, actually a .Asia domain name ranks a little bit higher than .com. If you're searching from India, a .in uh, domain ranks a little bit higher than .asia and then .com. So .asia overall around Asia actually gives you an advantage uh, for, for search uh, optimization uh, uh, if, if your business coming from Asia or if people are looking for Asian information. The other thing about search, um, and I'll, I'll come back to that, but the other thing about uh, uh, new GTLDs is the possibility of using IDNs. What is called IDNs are internationalized domain names. And this is the first time we're going to have a, a generic top level, a series of generic top level domains that are ending in native languages. Um, this is a, you know, this is a technical slide of what the, what a, an IDN is really it re really is. Behind the native language is a, a code. If you see this XN dash dash something, uh, don't be afraid of it. It's not spam. It's not, it's not malware. It's just an IDN. Um, of course, you know, I, I can talk very long about this, but I won't bore you about the te technology. But more important is why? You know, a lot of people uh, says IDN kind of have been around for some time. There isn't any take up. Even domainers say, hey, I, I got into the IDNs and, you know, uh, I didn't make much money out of it. However, again, we, can, we should come back to the basics. These are the, these are the people, you know, uh, today we have a couple million uh, users online. The next two million that is going to come online is not going to be as familiar with English. Uh, the first two million is very familiar with English. The next two mil billion is not going to be as familiar with English. And if you look, at, you look around businesses, local businesses, not only here in India, in China, in the Middle East, in Japan, in Korea, they use their own native language for brand names. And that's what they relate to. And today the internet, as much as we think globally, Actually, the internet is all about relevance and relevance about local. And local TLDs, local uh, language is going to play a very important part. Of course, all this I can talk about, and, and I've been talking about this for 15 years. I, I call myself a pioneer of IDNs, but we're still talking about it. So, so what? One of the things that I think is more important is if you tie it back to search engine. We all know that search engine search optimization uh, with domain names is a f key part of the, uh, of the value today. When you think about it, people's, people type domain names. Let's say people type, you, you think people type domain names in English and they're used to it. But think about